how did the moon form in this video we will address how the moon formed and basically three failed one commonly agreed hypothesis in the 1980s one extremely wild idea and then finally the latest and the most plausible hypothesis for the formation of our moon howdy howdy earthlings welcome to the viable channel where the english is bad but the science is good After the sun spun to light, the planets of the solar system began to form, but it took another 100 million years for the Earth's moon to spring into existence. There are at least 6 hypotheses which try to prove how our planet's satellite could have been created. Crucial points to note. Earth's moon is extremely huge when compared to other planets' moons per proportion. Analysis of the lunar rocks brought back from NASA's Apollo moon landing missions have shown that our moon has an isotopic composition very similar to that of Earth. However, the moon is much less dense than our planet, which would likely not be the case if both started with the same heavy elements at their core. High angular momentum of the Earth-moon system In 2012, researcher Robin Canop of the Southwest Research Institute in Texas proposed that Earth and the Moon formed at the same time when two massive objects, five times the size of Mars, crashed into each other. The hypothesis fails because the Moon should have the same overall composition as the Earth. Yet, the Moon has almost no iron or other siderophile elements. Perhaps Earth's gravity snagged a passing body as happened with other moons in the solar system such as the Martian moons of Phobos and Deimos. The moon was a wandering body like an asteroid that formed elsewhere in the solar system and was captured by Earth's gravity as it passed nearby. This hypothesis fails because capture is virtually impossible for an object as large as the moon. Such orbiters are often oddly shaped rather than being spherical bodies like the moon. Their paths do not tend to line up with the ecliptic of their parent planet, also unlike the moon. And if both the moon and earth have very similar isotopes, it makes the capture scenario difficult to maintain. The material that makes up the moon did actually either come out of the earth or that the stuff that was in the disk that formed the moon got completely mixed up with the stuff in the earth early earth was spinning so fast that it ripped into two pieces that is the moon was literally spun off of the earth this hypothesis fails because it requires molten earth material that would fly off earth's equator would have to fall back to the surface of the earth or escape into orbit around the sun it cannot simply go into orbit around the earth the biggest flaw of these three hypotheses is that they cannot account for the high angular momentum of the earth moon system the leading scenario of the moon's origin is that a mars sized early protoplanet called theia collided with earth about 4.5 billion years ago at the end of formation of earth and the planets The collision splashed enormous amounts of material out of Earth and the impactor. Most materials escaped into solar orbit or fell back to Earth, but some material experienced jetting from gases or collisions and ended up in orbit around Earth where it accreted into the moon. The newly formed moon was in a molten state, but within 100 million years, most of the global magma ocean had crystallized with less dense rocks floating upward and eventually forming the lunar crust. The hypothesis explains iron deficiency of the moon formed from the mantle materials of Earth and isotopic similarity to Earth formed from the same stuff as Earth. The reason for failure of this hypothesis is that although this is the most popular scenario, it is not without its challenges. The giant impact idea has trouble explaining why the Earth and the Moon are so peculiarly similar. Most models suggest that more than 60% of the Moon should be made from the material from Theia, but rock samples from the Apollo missions suggest otherwise. The Moon is much less dense than our planet, which would likely not be the case if both started with the same heavy elements at their core. Before we move on to the one wild idea that we have, Do consider hitting the like button and smashing the subscribe button. That would matter a lot for me. The moon stealer hypothesis. 
While the giant impact hypothesis fell out of favor during the 1980s, it was suggested that Earth could have stolen its moon from Venus. Dave Stevenson, a professor of planetary science at California Institute of Technology, proposed the Venus idea. But this is subject to the understanding of terrestrial planets and especially Venus. The scenario is that an object passed close by the Venus system and caused its moon to depart from its orbit. At this moment, we do not know anything about Venus in terms of the isotopes it has. Besides, we also need to understand whether or not Venus ever had a moon. But even aside from the Venus idea, the widely preferred giant impact scenario still is not satisfactory in all aspects. Even with the giant impact idea, we do not know the origin of the impacting object. It could have been an early protoplanet. It could have been a moon of another object that was removed from the gravitational field of its mother planet. It could also be a very large asteroid. All those scenarios are still open. The most plausible hypothesis is that of the multi-impact scenario. In the April 9th issue of Nature in 2015, Israeli researchers proposed that a rain of small debris fell on Earth to create the moon. The multi-impact scenario is a more natural way of explaining the formation of the moon. In the early stages of the solar system, impacts were very abundant. Therefore, it is more natural that several common impactors formed the moon rather than the special one. Scientists from the Technion and the University of Bardo carried out a modeling study that stimulated conditions of the formation of the early solar system where the proto Earth would have been battered by numerous collisions with other would-be planets. The research helps explain why rocks from the Earth and Moon are almost identical in makeup unlike other planets of the solar system. However, scientists are still on the trail of the detailed scenario that would seem both likely and complete in its ability to account for all the geochemical and geophysical observations. As we detect other planetary systems that are quite different from our own, the question arises, are there other Earths? By learning more about the Moon, we become increasingly aware of its interactions with our planet. In particular, we now know that the presence of our large moon acts to stabilize the variation of the Earth's rotational axis. Were it not for the moon, the influence of the giant planets in our system would cause Earth's obliquity, the angle between the Earth's equator and the plane of its orbit, whose current value is 23.5 degrees, to vary widely with values as extreme as 0 to 80 degrees. Such variation would probably cause extreme climatic changes that would render the Earth uninhabitable. Thus, having a large moon may be one of the key characteristics necessary for a habitable Earth-like planet, making it all the more important to resolve questions about the origin of our Earth and Moon. If you have reached the end of the video and have got value from it, do hit a like and smash the subscribe button. Thanks for watching the video.